Friends, an ideal husband, written by a play written by Oscar Wilde. So, Oscar Wilde, a famous Oscar Wilde. An ideal husband opens during a dinner party at the home of Sir Robert Chilton in London's fashionable Grosvenor Square. Sir Robert, a prestigious member of the House of Commons, and his wife, Lady Gertrude Chiltern, are hosting a gathering that includes his friend, Lord Goring, a dandified bachelor and close friend to the Chilterns, his sister, Mabel Chilton, and other gentle guests. During the party, Mrs. Chively, an enemy of Lady Chilton's from their school days, attempts to blackmail Sir Robert into supporting a fraudulent scheme to build a canal in Argentina. Apparently, Mrs. Chively's dead mentor, Baron Arnhem, convinced this young Sir Robert many years ago to sell him a cabinet secret, a secret that suggested he buy stocks in the Swiss Canal three days before the British government announces its purchase. Sir Robert made his fortune with that illicit money and Mrs. Chively has the letter to prove his prove his crime. Fearing both the ruin of career and marriage, Sir Robert submit to her demand. When Mrs. Chively pointedly informed Lady Chilton of Sir Robert's change of heart regarding the canal scheme, the morally inflexible lady, unaware of both of her husband's past and the blackmail plot, insist that Sir Robert renege on his promise. For Lady Chilton, their marriage is predicated on her having an ideal husband. That is a model spouse in both private and public life that she can worship. Thus, Sir Robert must remain unimpeachable in all its his decision. Sir Robert complies with the lady's wishes and apparently seals his doom. Also toward the end of Act 1, Mabel and Lord Goring come upon a diamond brooch that Lord Goring go gave someone many years ago. Goring takes the brooch and asks that Mabel inform him if someone, anyone comes to retrieve it. In the second act, which also takes place at Sir Robert House, Lord Goring urges Sir Robert to fight Mrs. Chively and admit his guilt to his wife. He also reveals that he and Mrs. Chively were formally engaged. After finishing his conversation with Sir Robert, Goring engaged in flirtatious banter with Mabel. He also takes Lady Chilton aside and obliquely urges her to less morally inflexible and more forgiving. Once Goring leaves, Mrs. Chively appears unexpected in search of a brooch she lost the previous evening, incensed at Sir Robert reneging on his promise. She ultimately exposes Sir Robert to his wife once they are both in the room. Unable to accept Sir Robert now unmasked, Lady Chilton then denounces her husband and refuses to forgive him. In the third act set in Lord Goring's home, Goring receives a pink letter from Lady Chilton asking for his help, a letter that might be read as compromising love note. Just as Goring receives this note, however, his father, Lord Caversham, drops in and demands to know when his son will marry. 
a visit from Sir Robert, who seeks further counsel from Goring, follows. Meanwhile, Mrs. Chevrolet arrives unexpectedly and misrecognized by the butler as the woman Goring await is ushered to the Lord Goring's drawing room. While she waits, she finds Lady Chiltern's letter ultimately. Sir Robert discovered Mrs. Chevley in the drawing room and convinced of an affair between these two former loves, angrily storms out of the house. When she and Lord Goring confront each other, Mrs. Chevley makes a proposal claiming to still love Goring from their early days of courtship. She offers to exchange Sir Robert letter for her old views hand in marriage. Lord Goring inclines, accuses her of her defiling love by reducing courtship to a vulgar transaction and ruining the children's marriage. He then spring his, his trap, removing the diamond brooch from his desk drawer. He binds it uh, to Chevley's wrist with a hidden device, Goring, that reveals how the item came into her possession. Apparently, Mrs. Chivley stole it from his cousin years ago to avoid arrest. Chivley must trade the incriminating letter for her release from the bejeweled handcuff. After Goring obtains and burns the letter, however, Mrs. Chivley steals Lady Chilton's note from his desk Vengefully, she plans to send it to Sir Robert, misconstrued as a love letter addressed to the dandified Lord Mrs. Chevley exists in the house in Trium. The final act, which returns to the Gross Wiener Squire, resolves the many plot complications sketched above with a decidedly happy ending. Lord Goring proposes to and is accepted by Mabel. Lord Geversham informs his son that Sir Robert has denounced the Argentine Canal scheme before the house. Lady Chiltern then appears and Lord Goring informs her that Sir Robert later has been destroyed, but that Mrs. Chevley has stolen her letter and plans to use it to destroy her marriage. At that moment, Sir Robert enters while reading Lady Chiltern's letter, but he has mistaken it for a letter of forgiveness written for him. The two reconcile the ever upright Lady Chiltern then attempts to drive Sir Robert to renounce his career in politics. But Lord Goring dissuades her from doing so. When Sir Robert refuses, Lord Goring, his sister in hand in marriage, still believing he has taken up with Mrs. Chivley. Lady Chiltern is forced to explain last night event and the true nature of the latter. Sir Robert relents and Lord Goring and Mabel are permitted to wed. So this is the story of an ideal husband by Oscar Wilde. This is a three act play, an ideal husband written by Oscar Wilde. The type of this is a drama, a genre of this play is romantic melodrama, satire of popular Victorian society drama that is formalic well and language written in English. Time and place of written of this writing of this drama is 1894 in London, staged immediately prior to Wilde's most successful play. So the date of first publication, 1895. So <clears throat> climax of this drama an ideal husband has no clear climax, but really relays a series of complications and crises. There are numerous climatic speech and climatic 
reversals at the end of each act, the revelation of Sir Robert, secret Mrs. Chimley's theft of ladies' children's letter, the most climatic confrontation is probably between Mrs. Chevley and Lord Goring at the end of Act 3. So protagonist of this play is Sir Robert Chilton, Lady Chilton and Lordy, Lord Goring. And falling action comes at the end of Act 4 where Sir Robert accepts his cabinet post and reconciles with his wife. Subsequently, Mabel and Lord Goring announce their engagement. These are the themes of this, is the ideal marriage, the ideal woman, aestheticisms, and art of modern living. These are the themes, the plays involved in this plays, An Ideal Husband by Oscar Wilde, the writer of uh, the portrait of uh, uh, a very famous uh, novel, 